making sure we got our audio right. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, y'all, we're here with another episode Ooh. of Cloth Talk. Uh, it's Charles J. Another day of Cloth Talk. We talk designers, manufacturing. Uh, season one is all South Jersey. That's all that we cater into right now because we got so many goats in the area that we got to, you know, highlight them. Sure. I got my man... Do we go by Ross, Rich Fit Media, I mean, Goat? Which which one? Which one we gonna go with today? <laughs> bro, I go by Rich. Man. All right, I so mean, man, people know me, but mm, so we're gonna go with Rich. All right, Rich, man, do your intro, man. It's, it's your floor. Do your intro. My intro. Who is Rich? Hey, man, who is Rich? Who? Dang, you probably made me go deep from the. You know what I mean? Like, we can we can hold that. Just intro yourself. <laughs> let people know who you are, what you do. Right, right. You know all so, the good um, stuff. So yeah, man, my name is Rich. Uh, I go by Rich Fit Media on Instagram. That's the LLC. That's the brand. Um, that's what I represent. And um, yeah, man. So I'm a photographer, videographer, um, overall creative designer, um, a health and wellness coach for going on seven to eight years. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, man. I just I've been doing a lot of things and found a way to bring it all together and uh, bring some service and value to people. You know, however I can. Okay. Listen, man, seven to eight years. Yes, sir. It's a long time. Yes, sir. What made you want to start that journey? Because I know you used to be a hooper. Right. A little bit of a hooper guy, little right? Hoop. Little yeah, hoop guy. Me a little hoop guy. So little. what made you want to transition into the health and wellness field? Um, so that's how that's that's how I got there. Uh, you know, I struggled with my weight all my life. Um and I was like, you know, like you said, I was a hooper, but I was one of those hoopers that was like, yo, if he was skinny like, if he was in shape, he would be tough, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so then my seventh grade summer, I took it real serious, took it real personal to lose weight. I remember being, like, 180 pounds in seventh grade, and I was pretty tall because I was, like, my height now. So I was, like, 5'11", 6 foot at seventh grade going in, and I was a center. I'm like... Wait, in, se wait, in seventh grade, you were 6 foot? I was, like, bro, I was like 5'11". I, was, I had my growth spurt early. <sighs> I hated people. Oh, no, 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 pardon me. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. I was going to high school. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. I didn't, didn't like you even more in eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, eighth grade. So I was like in, in middle school, I was a center. And then, you know, got to high school. I was just a guard. Mm -hmm. um, but I had lost like 20 pounds that, that summer. And I was just, I did it healthy at that point. I thought it was healthy, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and me and my boy, Mike Douglas, we would just run. And then we kind of did something called like the Atkins diet, where uh, you don't eat any carbs you just eat like uh, you know your proteins and, and greens, and you think that's healthy, but it's not at all. But yeah, so that was like the beginning for me to taking health serious and just training and working out and running. We would just run Cooper River every day and then just eat like burgers with no bun. Yeah, that's the list. Don't worry about that. Though. Burgers with no Don't worry about that. buns. Don't that ain't nobody business. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, but it, it still ain't your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Man, but like to to to. Be in the health and wellness game, you know, for that long, I guess it was kind of like a subconscious thing because you kind of just took it upon yourself to start taking that route without mm -hmm. even knowing later on that's something that you would ultimately, you know, want to build a lifestyle around. Yep. Yeah. Um, when did that transition really come in to where, you know, you transition from just, you know, doing the health and wellness thing because you wanted to mm -hmm. and then physically turning it into an actual lifestyle? Right. Um, when, it, when I turned into an actual lifestyle, that was um, – uh, she seven years, seven years ago. That's when um started my Herbalife journey. Um, and I just wanted to lose weight. You know what I mean? I just wanted to really be healthy now. So, high school, I wanted to lose weight. This time, I was twenty, you know, twenty three, twenty two. I wanted to lose weight. You know what I mean? And um, I mean, I wanted to be healthy. So, I I wanted to feel good, look good, everything. You know, I wanted to be all natural. Um, my family, my background, we from Jamaica. So. That was important to me. I would always think about how my, my grandma and my mother and my aunt grew up. They grew up oh. picking mangoes, natural fruits, all from the garden. We didn't have that over here in Jersey, you know what I mean? So um, so me starting Herbalife, that was the beginning of that. And then my change uh, sparked a bunch of people's change because they saw me and they like, bro, you never look like that. What you doing? So that's what that was. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so your family, parents and everything are from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So they grew up there and they moved here when yes sir um 50 years ago 50 years ago so yeah. they were how old when they got here so they were my grandma yeah my grandma was around was 30 around like 30 ish um and my mom 
my mom and my aunt, they were they were young. They were like uh they were like yeah, like ten. They were like teens. They were like ten going on to in between that age. I don't know the exact year. Okay. Um but yeah, they were they were pretty young. And what did they um what do they what did they end up doing when they got to the US? Because you know, you know, fifty years ago it's you know, it's a completely different mm -hmm. climate mm -hmm. um and things like that. So what was what was it like when they got here? Yeah, so I mean when they got here they were you know, they were struggling. It was a complete three sixty and opposite, um, opposed to what they're used to. You know what I mean? Over in Jamaica they were living pretty, pretty well. Our great grand my great grandfather, um, you know, he did extremely well for himself. So the lifestyle over there opposed to coming to America, you know, my grandmother coming over here and um, you know, just starting fresh. And uh, so they, they moved to New York and they they lived in the hood, you know. They were oh. struggling, they were trying to find their way, single mom two children and to be honest i think my grandmother came over first and then and yeah and then my mom her two daughters my mom and my aunt they came over afterwards actually to be honest so my grandma came over first got a job got a you know got a crib got started got settled and then um and then our family back in jamaica was raising my mom and aunt at that time and then they came over later on right now how do you feel as though like that you know transition for them affected you <clears throat> and you know your drive and you know the things that you know you pursue and you know kind of like i guess you know kind of put that battery in your back right um talk a little bit more about that right um i think uh that's that's literally everything everything that i represent because they um my family anyone that knows my family they're super loving super super loving super supporting but they're they're pure grit pure you know what i mean pure grind mm -hmm. um so and that's what they had to go through so that naturally I saw that, and I was raised by, like I said, I was, well, I was raised by all, all three of them, and then my sister, so four women. Um, so it was a constant reminder of, like, what not to be, you know what I mean? Because as I grew up, I'm realizing, like, there's no man in the house, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And um, so, yeah, and then to live courageously. So I could tell they limited themselves in certain ways mm -hmm. um, because they had to do what they had to do. So they kind of would push for me to do opposite of that. I mean, with Richfield Media, um, when you came up with the phrase, I kind of didn't want to dive into this this early, but um, I feel like we kind of have to because it really just embodies everything. You know, me personally knowing you outside of just, you know, this whole industry and, and right. things and, and, you know, seeing you, you know, start your brand realistically, like with a product last year. Right, right? literally, yeah. How talk a little bit more before we dive into you know the whole uh, mantra that you're on right now. Okay. Talk a little bit more about the starting process and how difficult it is just to get to the point to start. Jesus. So, yeah, man, that's that's a great question. First of all, bro, but um, the starting process is um, it depends on how you start though. To be honest, and what is your initial start? Because my initial start, at least I guess to say in this lane, was when I did the Herbalife hats. Right. You know what I mean? So I did that before last year, but as in Richfit Media's mm -hmm. product, that was last year in the middle of the pandemic, literally. Um, but is I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's, it's work. If, you, if you're if you really attached to it in your heart, then it's not difficult, mm -hmm. but it just takes work. And you gotta be, um, you gotta be courageous. Like you can't care and you gotta ask, you gotta be bold. You gotta, you gotta really want it. Um, and I think that's why you were, you know, such an implement to my, to my situation and you were so open because you could tell I was hungry about it, I was serious, and I was genuine from the heart, you know what I mean? But it comes down to that. If you want to get it done, you'll get it done. And if not, um, you know, the people that do it just for money, which is nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but they move with a different energy than the people that are attached to what they're trying to, right. to get done. So, um, and then it was, it was during the pandemic, so it was like, what do we have to lose? Mm -hmm. you know? Do you feel like, uh, you know, touching just touching on the whole idea of doing things for money, do you mm -hmm. think, why do you think people are so driven by that? Mm. I mean, once again, I, that money is everything, man, to people mm -hmm. in, in, in different ways. But people are so driven by that because a lot of different reasons. Insecurities, they have things to prove. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they want to provide for their family. They want to, you know, some people it's ego. They want to just be the man. They want to be able to have power. There's so many different reasons for different people. And I think it starts from where you come from and, and, and your home you were raised in, you know what I mean? It'll start with your home, your culture, and then I think next it'll be 
you know, where are you from, right? Mm-hmm. From our area, and then it, it chops down because I'm from Pensalkin, um, and you can your lifestyle can be a multitude of things being Listen, from Pensalkin. It depends on what side of the street you literally. Want. <laughs> it depends on what side of it, right? Like you ask, hey, what's your what's your zip? Like, mm-hmm. what part of one? What side of one thirty you on? Facts. You know what I mean? And then a few blocks down from Pensalkin, you go to Camden, and it's like another world switch you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's levels and layers to people's desires and, and their hunger and why they why they move uh after the dollar the way they do so i can't judge nobody right um i i just try to move on understanding i'll be like i get it i just choose not to you know solely bank on that right i mean something that that nipsey talked about a lot was the idea of transitioning out of survival mode mm. do you feel like you've made that transition already uh definitely Definitely. And I remember us having that conversation in here um, out of survival mode. And, and yeah, and that's a part of like, that's a that's a big piece of me. You know what I mean? Definitely out of out of survival mode and and being OK with what that comes with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that comes with losses, that comes with pain, mm-hmm. that comes with regret if you let it get there. And it's like, um, so but yeah, just out of that, because once I got to just I say free flowing mm-hmm. and just I mm-hmm. got into my groove. I didn't have to worry about surviving anymore. Right. And, and, you know, transitioning out of something I've seen, you know, even just with you, is transitioning out of survival mode, it allows abundance Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be given to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, I've seen, I've been, bro, I've been watching you every step of the way and just seeing your growth and the fact that, you know, you just turned it on. Thank you, bro. That's it. Like, thank you. You had, uh, most people have everything that they need to get started and flourish. Right. But it's the fear of, if I turn this on and I fail. Right, 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 right. What is everybody going to say about it? Exactly. But I feel like you live with no fear at this point. You're literally putting things out at a capacity that you feel like, listen, if I believe in it, I'm going to do it. Regardless of what the outcome is, I'm going to do it. Yep. And that goes into your current mantra. Right. Mantra. I said mantra. Right. Mantra. Right. Talk more. Dive into really what the concept of die empty is. Right. Because right. when I saw it, I knew off the rip what it was. Right. Right. I, right, I already right, right. knew. I was like die empty. <laughs> that's golden. Yeah. Like that's 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 it. Like that's that's equivalent to just do it. Right. Right. Thank you, bro. Damn. So that's heavy. How did you come up with die empty, and how has it shaped everything that you're building from this point forward? Right. That's heavy, man. So. Um, so Die Empty, Die Empty came about, man. Um, it started with, I was listening to Les Brown, one of my favorite speakers, man. Um, my God, thank you, Uncle Les. But Uncle Les was, um, that's when the vision came with that. He was talking about the richest place on earth is the graveyard. Whoo! You know what I mean? Run that back, run that back. So Les Brown said the richest place on earth is the graveyard. I'm like, well, all right now. I ain't trying to. <laughs> what, what you talking about, Les? What you, I ain't trying to go there, baby. Mm-mm. I want riches, but. And he broke it down, and he was just talking about how many people die with all their dreams, visions, goals, how many ideas that came from God that people didn't move on, only because of fear. You know what I mean? So because of fear, they were robbed of the life they really were supposed to live. Whether the riches had anything to do with you know money of at all or success, but mm-hmm. you know purpose like passion and significance so and he was like um he was like what if you died and every and every dream and vision that god gave you was just sitting around around the, uh, your bed while you're in the hospital dying and they're looking at you like why didn't you tap into us why didn't you you know what i mean and i was like oh hell no yeah like because during that time it was, it was like five years ago maybe but I felt things inside of me that I didn't tap into yet. You know what I mean? That they were kind of pulling on me that I would talk myself out of because I'm like, nah, I'm not that. Or I won't do that because everyone else is doing it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so that that was that kind of broke the seal for me to start thinking about, you know, I got to die empty. And I think as long as I pursue that, I'm going to be all right. Like, God's going to take care of the rest. Mm. So that was the beginning. And, um, and shout out uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, one of my favorite um, biblical teachers. He pressed on it again, and that's when that's when I was like, "This is what I'm going to do," um, as far as how I'm gonna live my life. Right. You know what I mean? And that way, when my time comes, I don't have any regrets at all. The people know and they see it. Like that's my life, right? Like, my lifestyle in different ways. Like nah, everything I do is about 
making sure I'm pushing to empty myself out, all goals, all visions. I don't care. I have no fear. I don't care about what anyone thinks. Um, and because none of us should, you know what right. I mean? Because I, growing up, I, I kind of was like a people pleaser. Mm. And I didn't realize it um, just because I like good energy. Yep. So if I come in a room and I'm like, yo, if I can make people feel good, that oh. was just something innately in me. You know what mm. I mean? So, but that people pleasing, you realize you're attaching yourself to other people. Yep. And when I tried to do that and people still didn't like me at certain times or people still had bad things to say, I'm like, wait, how could you? So then I realized, oh, you can't care about what anyone thinks because even if you try to do what's right to them, it'll still be wrong mm -hmm. sometimes. So all that kind of just goes together into the die empty mantra. It's like, do you feel like you saw parts of die empty when you made that first Herbalife hat? Because like, I know the excitement, like I wasn't as close to you back then as you know, I am now mm -hmm. and the grit, the energy, everything was the same back then. Mm. Wow. I just think you didn't channel it as much as you do right now. Right, right, right. And when you first made that Herbalife hat, what was the thought process? Because, um, you know, a lot of people who, you know, a lot of our viewers or a lot of people who are just trying to get in their, their foot in the door, uh -huh. they battle their subconscious with the idea of how do I even start? Mm. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, the fact that you started the Herbalife Hats, you know, years ago, yeah. but you never ran away from the vision. You just parked it on the side until you were really ready to start driving. Right, right, right. So talk about, you know, just initially starting, but then understanding that maybe right now, you know, I can focus on something else and always come back to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so starting was actually, Jesus, starting <laughs> was, starting that Herbalife Hat venture was, was scary, bro. So when I had the idea, I was ecstatic because that's how I always am. When I get ideas, I know, like, I got something. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Theo, my boy Theo. Theo, go. Frank. South Jersey Goats, yeah, right we here. Was, we was at my crib, crib in the, in the hood. It was on, uh, it was on fourth. And um, I was sweeping. I literally was sweeping out front of the house. And they were just on the porch. They were just talking. I feel like Starge might have been there, too. I, I know somebody else that was there. I think Starge was there. Shout out Night Child. But oh. I was sweeping, and I just looked at them. I was like, yo, that's it. I'm going to do Herbalife hats. And, you know, if you know anything about Herbalife, we love to be branded up. You know, mm -hmm. love to let you know that we healthy, and we love to get you healthy. Um, anyway, but I'm like, yo, we're going to do hats because, one, I got a vision for them, and, two, they're going to pop. Three, I don't have to wear what everybody else is wearing. I always like to, like, that's what pushed me to create my own things because I would see things that I would like. But I would be like, why didn't they do this? Mm. Why didn't they, Nike, why didn't y'all? And then I'm like, oh, dummy, God, trying to tell you, make your own, boy. Yep. You know what I mean? So it was scary. I went and did it. I made like 30 of them. Theo came and took the pics. That's actually how I got into photography. Mm -hmm. But Theo came to take the pictures. And when he took the pictures of them, I had to post them up the next morning or that night. And I got anxiety when I was about to post it. And I, I, I sat in my kitchen. I sat with my back against the light. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, the cabinet, and I just sat there for like thirty minutes, and God kind of showed me what was gonna happen. Like He showed me they were gonna fly, mm -hmm. and I was scared. Like, like what the hell? And I kind of paused for like thirty minutes. Then I posted it, turned my phone off. And I woke up, they all were sold out. Why do you, why do you feel like we're so scared of success? Mm, I think I think we're scared of the new. And for me, that was new because at that moment, I was comfortable with posting or doing whatever as long as it was fine with fitness and me being me. But what happened was I was like, they've never seen me create anything. They've never seen me do anything with clothes or like merchandise, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if they're going to rock with this. Like, and so that new feeling, um, I got scared. I'm like, I don't, because I don't know because it's new. It's uncomfortable. But to your point, people, we, we are scared of success as well. And because that's new, and I think because success comes with responsibility, so that that I think that's that's it. I think you I think you got to repeat that one for for everybody that's listening right now because that's it. That's a deep one right there. Right, right, yeah. Because once whatever your success is, that comes with that comes with responsibility. You know what I mean? You got to maintain the success. You have to. You don't have to, but it comes with a lot people's ideas of where you're at and what you're supposed to do. With them and with them and you know so 
as long as you don't overthink stuff, I think that's probably the best thing you can do. Do you feel like in our culture, um, not just talking about South Jersey, but just in our culture in general, mm -hmm. there's at times um, we're scared also not just of success, but we're also scared of accountability. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? And I'm sorry, repeat, you said, did you say our culture in South Jersey? Well, no, our culture, not even, I mean, not more so just South Jersey, but okay. just our culture in general. Mm -hmm. um, I know I see at times that um, ownership and accountability yes. sometimes is something that we're scared of. Why do you think that, you know, that's that's something that we're afraid to, you know, take head on? Mm, that's heavy. Um, I think, I mean, because it's it's not easy to do. Like, the easy thing to do is to not take accountability for anything. Like, it's super easy to post the blame on somebody else or something else. So that, once again, that takes courage. Like, somebody that constantly takes accountability, that's a leader. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so I think I think that's what it is. And it's just an easy way out. Like, you know what I mean? You could wipe your hands with, oh, no, this happened. This happened in my life. Or it was my, you know, your counterpart or your teammates, you know. You can blame it on anything, anything you want. So it takes courage to be like, nah, this was me, but I'm gonna be back. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, nah, definitely. I think, I mean, when when you're in the fashion realm or dealing with anything from a design standpoint, you know, everybody thinks every design I'm gonna make is gonna be the one. Right. right As right, a designer, right, 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 right. you know, that's we're so confident within our design capability that it's like every design that we put out is the quote unquote the one, mm. and. I think at times we, with going in something into something with that expectation, mm -hmm. it begins to affect our mental health when we don't get those results. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mental health has been something huge. It's mental health aware, mental health awareness month. Jesus, I didn't um, know that. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, what are some things that you do, you know, to protect not only just your energy but you know your own mental health? Because being a designer and selling a product. Um, a lot of people think it's just, yo, I just, you know, design this, put it out, it sells out, and I yep. move to the next one. But, you know, there, there's a lot of things on the back end that, um, you know, aren't necessarily visible that have to go on for a brand to be somewhat successful. Yes. What are some of those things in the back end you do to, you know, maintain a strong mental, but also understand that, you know, you can't put these outlandish expectations on yourself? Right. Um, so I think the number one thing I do to maintain a strong mental period is a uh, is my relationship with God, bro? Mm. Um, how much I rely on Him, how much I, I lean on Him. You know what I mean? How much I'm I'm praying throughout the day, twenty four seven. Um, at least the season I'm in right now. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be extra or OD at all, but and that's because of where I'm at. I need Him every right. day. You know what I mean? So me understanding and having that that outlet to God, I need you to fix it because I can't allows me to keep going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even with Him, it gets it gets hard where you feel like you can't, um, but that's when he'll remind you mm -hmm. of what you know. And Subtle reminders. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, bro. So I think number one, a tribute to my mental health, um, especially being a designer and just overall is my relationship with God and how much I put responsibility on him because that's what he told me. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm very bold with my relationship with God, um, and I try to be. Um, and that shows faith to him as well because it's like I'm calling him every day like, yo, you said you can – you know, I don't I don't praise no regular God. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. So I expect supernatural from him. Um, and being willing to do the other steps as well. Like, just because you have faith doesn't mean you can't have a therapist. Mm -hmm. um, that scares, you know, our culture, our, our folk, you know. I we, think. We're, that's new for us. That's new for us. It is. And you know, I never heard of that. To, when that we heard therapy, we heard crazy mm -hmm. so we didn't you know what i mean so being open to that you know what i mean that was a new venture for me as well and just 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 understanding just understanding who i am and where i'm at you know what i mean i'm in this world not of it and i'm a black man in this world and not of it so i gotta i gotta protect myself um for me and my family at all times so that helps me the most when it comes to that and it might be cliche but that's why i'm fearless when i create i don't put expectations on my Jones. Some, I mean, sometimes you do because you can't because you hype. You like right. this gonna be fire, and then it's like, dang, only three orders. Right. I'm like, that's crazy. I mm -hmm. could have swore this was yep. this was selling out. Then then God send you that subtle reminder three four days later, and mm -hmm. it's about ten to fifteen to twenty orders mm -hmm. in there, and you're like, okay, yeah. On the God. one you slept on. Mm -hmm. Yep. On the one you slept on. Yo, let me get that. Mm -hmm. 
I'll be like, you sure? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Almost about to tell him, don't get it. Listen, man, if it's a customer, you always say yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. How, um, how have you been able to, you know, build your audience? Um, I know, you know, coming from the Herbalife uh, realm, uh, coming from, you know, the health and wellness uh, realm, you've been able to, you know, build those one-on-one relationships, whether they're with clients or people, you know, you sold, you know, your products to, uh, you know, back in the day. Right. Have a lot of those people still stayed loyal to, you know, the mission that you're on right now, even though it's pretty much the same, but slightly a little bit different now because you're offering a physical apparel product. Right, right. Can I, uh, can I take that real quick? Yeah. He got uh, to break his seal. I, oh no 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 no! I'm no, I'm the, I'm the Go ahead, yeah yeah yeah. Right. Go ahead, bro. Set that up. Yeah. So, um, we got, listen, man. R- Ross is famous. Uh, for me to even get him in his room right now, he has some unreleased Yeezys on his feet. Um, listen, man. Listen, he don't got the Urbane socks on today, but you know we gonna let him rock. We gonna let him rock. Um, but now, nah, um, Ross has you know been. A, a vital part of you know my own personal growth um you know he he's the guy that's going to reach out to you and be like yo bro just wanted to tap in with you and check in with you and make sure you're doing all right um do you need anything um so you know anybody who is listening make sure y'all follow at rich fish at rich fit media r-i-c-h-f-i-t-m-e-d-i-a um follow him for any type of inspiration any type of you know his brand is crazy fire quality is crazy good so um, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to have, you know, this guy in the room right now. And, um, you know, as we finish getting all of this phone stuff together, <laughs> <Pardon>. <laughs> it's all good, bro. Um, You're not gonna break it this way. Okay. You said this strong. Got it? Let me hold it. My fault, causing all the chaos. Green, brother. Pardon me. Yeah. These are the outtakes. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> right. We back on. We back on the IG. We back on the IG. We good. Let's get them headphones on. Okay. Got it. Yeah, I got it. Yo, yo. All right, we back. All right, so we're gonna segment back into where we left off. Um, we were talking about. Uh, that an audience transition question. Oh, yeah, yeah, audience. Great. So, boom, we was talking about the audience transition question. Uh, Ross, so you used to do uh, wine, get into me a little bit. You feel <laughs> me? Said, I'm feeling Listen, a I'm a, anybody who doesn't know, I'm a wine connoisseur. I love wine. If you do want to, you know, do anything nice for me, just grab me a nice bottle of like wine. It like doesn't that. matter what it is. I drink all facets of wine. doesn't like matter that. whether it's vintage, you know, throwback. Modern day, if it's the 1099 bottle, I'm good with that. Just hook me up. I got you. But um, let's tap back into, you know, when building a brand and we talk about building an audience, Mm -hmm. has what you've done previously in a different business venture with Herbalife been able to transition into this new season of, you know, apparel design? Yes, sir. So, um, yeah, one, yeah, get that. (laughs) My guy. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, bro, 1000%. Like one thousand percent, bro. Um, me, I think, I think the biggest, uh, the best thing for me was I've always been genuine and honest 
with my business. So in Herbalife, a lot of those people came over to support. They definitely have been solid and showing extreme love. Um, a lot of my clients, past you know, past clientele, past teammates, um, team members, um, you know, mentors, all of that. Like a lot of people that that I met along that way, definitely pulled up and um, and they and they loved it. And it was also because it was something they could they could attach to them, themselves to, mm. and they know I've lived it. You know what I mean? So, um, when I when I when I put the die empty. On the merchandise, it's not just some words, and and that's why I kind of left the print plain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't do a crazy, crazy font, a crazy picture on it, or nothing. Like I wanted it to be unique, but just clean and simple and powerful because that's that's kind of what it is. But yeah, man, um, just take when you take care of people, they take care of you. So and that's kind of what happened. For me. Yeah, I always I always try to preach. Everybody wants to go from zero to a hundred, and that's one percent. Right. Like LeBron, that, that's a, he's part of the one percent. Right, right, <laughs> Everybody right, thinks right. they could be a LeBron, but a lot of times, you know, you got to be the dude that puts, you know, your ten thousand hours in, mm-hmm. five thousand hours, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. You got to put that in just to see a little bit of a result. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, where would you say in your journey right now you're at? Would you say you know you're expert in your field? Would you say, you know, I'm still figuring things out day to day? Right. Um, you know, where do you say you're at in your journey right now? Well, in my in my journey, I'm I'm definitely still figuring things out day to day. That and I think that'll never change, of course. Um, and especially like as a designer, right? Is that what you're speaking about? Yeah. So as a designer, I mean, uh, I'm I'm a rookie here. You know what I mean? That's kind of how R- I feel. R- rookie of the year. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, R- I'm, rookie I'm a, of the year. I'm a rookie, but as in time in, but as in the things that I've went through with the build up build up the attributes to make me successful in this game. Um, I feel like I got that 10,000 hours, mm-hmm. and that comes with my mindset and, and spiritually where I'm at, you know what I mean? Like I said, just creating, flowing, um, and, and not overthinking, being fearless, and um, and having the consistency to keep going as well. So I think those things really help me out. Um, where do you really want to take – Rich Fit Media. Um, I, I asked people this question because a lot of people who are in the fashion industry, mm-hmm. um, at times it's like, what is the reason why you're doing it? Right. Some people are like, yo, you know what? My end goal, I just want to be in New York Fashion Week. If I get to New York Fashion Week, I'm good. I don't need anything else. That's the stamp that I need. That's the approval. I'm one of the greatest designers of all time. I made it to New York Fashion Week. Right. Um, there's some people who are, you know, I got to make $5 million a year for my brand. Um, or, you know, you have people who are just like, I just want to impact. Right. Where do you fall under, you know, in those buckets as far as, you know, what your goal is and what your values are? Right. So I think I fall in that last bucket of I just want to impact. So I have no, like, like fashion week goals or, like, you know what I mean? I've just – um I just started – I just had a vision, and I was like, I'm going to do it. And I'm kind of big on not putting labels on things, you know what I mean? Like, that. just recently I started – dressed as like a designer or you know what I mean um, oh you got th- oh that's right what happened? you're a designer now yeah that's yeah it's I legit so. it's a hundred percent that's what I heard I'm like oh really I'm like, oh it's lit but um but yeah bro so I just want to impact um this was just even when I did this I knew this was just um I knew this was just something that I was adding to you know to my belt to my tricks, I guess, and just um, but I knew it was purposeful and it was something that I wanted to deliver. So um, so yeah, man. So I don't really have those kind of goals where I'm like it's fashion week or I want to be the greatest designer of all time. Nah, I just I do want to do it and I want to deliver what I like and I want to de- deliver quality to people mm-hmm. and I want people to feel good when they pay for my stuff right. and, and which they have been, which has been amazing. Why well, I'm so grateful for every order. Every person that supports me, every retweet, comment, you know what I mean? And that's why, I, I think that's why I even um, got to this point, because people are like, yo, the quality is stuff along with the message. And mm-hmm. that, that was my idea, you know what I mean? Um, so quality is is a, a real thing that, um, you know, I preach every single day. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, yes, you do. how do you feel like, you know, from – for somebody who's just starting out their brand, right? How do you take the steps to even get to the point where, like, we your, your conversation is about quality, right? Because every brand has to start somewhere, right. and 
you know, at the entry level, you know, people complain about, you know, or you're not complain, but people say like, hey, you know, I don't have the resources or, you know, I don't have the information or I don't have this. Or I don't have that. Mm-hmm. How have you been able to transition from, you know, being the guy that just started his brand right. to the point now where you're at, where it's like, I can justify that my quality is on the same level or if not better than a lot of these major brands that are out here. How did you transition to that, you know, that level? Okay. So you want me to be honest? Listen, bro, we 100% transparent, so um, so I want you to be as honest as so, possible. So how do you get there is we call you. <laughs> <laughs> we call, no, we no. call the goat. No, we no. call the lamb. No. The lamb. We call you. But, um, no, nah, seriously, bro, it's part is you, conversations with you, understanding your thought process of how you handled your brand, um, you know, the love and help that you've given me. But also, um, it comes to mindset and what's important. So what do you value with your brand? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you're just trying to get quantity off or you want quality off or if you want to do both or what do you think is important? Some people think it's fine to just whatever, whatever they do. You know, you can screen print, you can, you know, vinyl, you have options. Um, For me, I knew what I like. So I was like, when I purchase something, I don't want to question it after the wash. I don't want to question how it feels. Mm -hmm. I thought anything with embroidery, when I brought it growing up, it felt different to me. It mm-hmm. just felt like a, a higher quality piece. So I was like, when I do my pieces, I want everything to be stitched, all embroidered, and you know what I mean? And then we go to the fabric and make sure the fabric feels good on me. It's good for the certain, you know, weather or climate at that time. And, um, and yeah, man, so it just comes down to what you want to put out there and realizing that matters. Mm-hmm. And you might have to take some shorts because that costs a lot more. Right. If I want, like, no shade to anyone, but if I want, you know, a gilding or a very light tee, you know what I mean, and then just just vinyl something over that, that's not going to cost a lot, but it's not going to give them the same effect either. Right. But depending on your brand, your brand's message might be so heavy it don't matter. Right. You know what I mean? So it depends on what you want to do, how you want to do it, and what works for you. You feel me? So I think a lot of people miss that. Like, they don't focus on what works for them. Right. So this worked for me. Yeah, I think something that I, I get a lot of pushback on is, like, I'll be talking to, uh, you know, like a new designer or somebody who is, you know, just starting out, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, you know, I really want to start out with something that's quality. Right. I think this phone's going back up. It's all good. Um, but people say that, you know, I want to start out with quality. Mm-hmm. But something that I tell them is quality is not a matter of a lack of resources. Right. Quality is not a lack of information. Mm -hmm. Quality is really more so about a choice. Mm -hmm. And every day you get to wake up and decide whether or not you want to develop something at a certain level. Yep. Um, From your mindset, do you feel like you look at things now more on, I'm trying to do it on the same level as the leaders of the industry um, versus when you started out, you were just like, I just need to get started. Talk a little bit about that. Definitely. That's an amazing Amazing question, bro. Um, so definitely, when I first started, it was like, I just need to get started. I think, and I know you remember that. I was like, nah, bro, I need to just get started. I need to make it real, and I need to um, stay in that energy, mm-hmm. that 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 range. Because when you get started, you're excited. Mm-hmm. But that excitement is going to go away. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, well, it, it, it might not, but for me, I wanted to check it and make sure I, I carried that energy of excitement into a manifested product. Do you feel um, like you have to monitor that at times because – I know even with me, like when I was first starting out, Mm -hmm. I would get so excited that it would be so high to the point where when it drops, Mm -hmm. it's a significant drop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your highs and lows and how, you know, you're able to maintain a certain level of composure and thought process so that you don't get too low. Because I know me, I get low sometimes. I'm six years in and I still get low. So talk a little bit about that, you know. Yeah, um, that's a real thing. See, I don't, I don't monitor them because I feed off my energy and my, I need that to keep going. So like when I'm in the crib and I get an idea and I'm like, oh, and I start typing, and I start writing and whiteboards and, you know what I mean. Um, but it is to like, it's important to take expectation off, like right. what we spoke about before, because you know what I mean. Once you place that, it's there. You can't hide it. You know, once you have that expectation that this is going to. And that just comes with it, that you know what I mean. So it's like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't put too much on myself. You know what I mean? Because um, we're human, and we're gonna 
So I just try to flow as much as possible. You know what I mean? But that is very important, and it's, it's difficult, especially because anything you create, that's your baby. Right. You know what I mean? So you're going to care about it, and, and people might not always realize what you put into it to get it there. Do you – I know a lot of people say – they want to be a designer mm-hmm. until it's time to be a designer. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by that is a lot of people love the glitz and glamour of being a designer. I get to make this dope piece. I get to put it out to the public. People love it. But they don't get to see a lot of the background stuff that, you know, we have to deal with. Yeah. What are some background things that, you know, you didn't really enjoy at first, but you had to find a way to start to enjoy them so that you could progress in your business? Um, sheesh, man, the back. You can talk about stuff. the website. <laughs> <laughs> the damn <laughs> website. Nah, the crazy part is the website was easy for me mm-hmm. because, because of. Come on, man. Because of you. But, um, but yeah, man, the, um, just stuff like that, like the website, handling orders. That's mm. something designers don't talk. Handling orders, bro, that's work. You know what I mean? With or without a website. With a website, it's easier. Um, but with me, when I first started, or if I have like quick pieces, I'll just drop them and then it's like, you know, you can cash app via whatever, mm-hmm. PayPal, Venmo, Zelle. Until you get um, 20 cash apps at one time. Exactly. And then not, no, not only that, all the cash apps is fine. It's realizing, oh, I got to go back every time to get the address, mm-hmm. get the, oh, uh, what's the size? What's the, nah, website only. Right. <laughs> <laughs> website only. We're not doing no DMs or nothing, <laughs> none of that. Um, but yeah, so stuff like that, bro. And then, of course, you know, if you depending on if they're going the manufacturing route, um, sampling something you you're, you're heavy on, you know what I mean. Um, you gotta wait for the samples, you know what I mean. It's it's, it's a lot of time. You gotta you gotta think ahead, and you gotta know your calendar. Mm-hmm. You have to know your calendar. Not about what you make, but just it matters because you want to be you want to be on time. So to be on time, you gotta be ahead. Mm-hmm. So. No, I definitely agree with the the being ahead part. Mm-hmm. Um, there's times where, you know, as designers, we think like, oh, man, you know, I want to drop this so crazy right now. Right. But you have to take a step back and be like, what is the process that goes along with this? Mm-hmm. And do I have, not saying do I have enough time, because you can always make enough time. Right. And you're never on anybody else's timeline but your own. Exactly. Do you at times feel any type of pressure, like any type of external pressure? It doesn't, you know, whether it's the fashion industry, whether it's, you know, your customers, mm-hmm. Um, wanting specific things in certain colors. Um, talk a little bit about the pressures that come along with being a designer right. and being a, desi- de- being a designer that actually has a demand. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, man, uh, definitely feel pressure um, getting them out, you know what I mean, just, that, to, just from the door with that, you know what I mean, because I, I do a lot of my stuff, like, as they're ordered, you know what I mean, on hand, quick going, so... Um, but I had to make adjustments so that that pressure was relieved. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as staying consistent, there's that pressure. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't, because, and it's not about just having something always, mm-hmm. but it's about finding that balance. So that pressure of that balance of I'm going to go away for a little bit to come back and give you something again that's, that's you know, up to par. So mm-hmm. that pressure is real, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to go away too long. You don't want to lose that fire. Or that momentum you have. So understanding how to ride the momentum mm-hmm. and, and, and keep it going. So those things are always there. But I think what, what relieves me from that is is just constantly creating. Yeah. You know, Cam, shout out Cam. He says never stop creating. So yeah. that's the way, that's the answer for everything. New In Herb Life, we would say new solves all. Same thing. Never stop creating. Right. You know, you talk to new people, that'll solve everything. You know what I mean? So it's just work. All It just comes down to keep working. Life is about work. Mm-hmm. So once I understood that, things changed. Where do you feel like <clears throat> as far as having the right people around you, mm-hmm. how vital has that been to, you know, your own success, you know, not just with Rich Fit Media, but just right. success in general? How has, you know, your inner circle or the people that you've been around been an influence to where you're trying to go? Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that's that's been everything. That's been that's been that's everything, bro. Um, my circle, I keep. I'm very, I'm very. Um, yeah, he, he don't he don't let anybody in his circle. I'm just let y'all know now. So y'all trying to get in the rich fit media circle? Stay happy, helpful. What is it? Stay happy, healthy, hopeful. Yes, sir. That circle that he got, everybody can't get in that. You got to put. You got to earn your stripes. Gotta I'm just letting stripes. y'all know now. You got to earn your stripes. Got to earn your stripes. 
But yeah, man, that's been everything for me. Um, my my first of all, I've been blessed to have a lot of friends. Like growing up, you know, your parents are like uh, the elders. They be like, if you could count five good friends on your hand, and you got, you're blessed. Like you know what I mean? I have I have like times that by three. You know what I mean? A solid dude, solid brothers. You know what I mean? Listen, man, if you play basketball in South Jersey, <laughs> you got a solid <laughs> ten. Off the facts, rip. Facts, facts. Because we heavy. Because we heavy. We all we heavy. So that's a fact. <laughs> you feel me? So shout out to that basketball, man. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so from there, we and we constantly push each other. We we, we we don't we love each other. You know what I mean? We keep each other up. We take that serious, mm-hmm. being being there for each other. You know what I mean? I know I need something. I can call on them. I can call you. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. It's a real thing. So that – that was everything, you know. What I mean, seeing success early from from my friends and and at different times, watching how each of them has handled it, and me finding my own way, you know what I mean. And and that builds character too, you know what I mean. When you have family or friends that, you know, they get to their point before you, you know, you have a decision to make to play victim and kind of be bitter or just be joyous for them and wait on your own time. And that's something I take a lot of pride in because I had to find I had to find find my way, you know what I mean. And it was just like I always was just happy and. Belief. I think that right. matters with belief. I had a belief in myself that like my time is coming, my life is good. So seeing them and feeding off their energy, just pure joy. You know what I mean? Even yesterday, G pulled up on me, pulled up on me. New will. You know what I mean? Happy, happy, happy for my boy. So um, just those things, just those things are they they matter a lot. No, I mean I think you know just seeing the climate of where like South Jersey is right now mm-hmm. versus where we used to be. Crazy. Um, it's actually crazy. It, it really is because you know, like you know, you're, you're best friends with somebody like Aunt Clemens, who you know right. was won a Grammy. Right, right, right. Yeah, shout out, bro. Yeah, shout out, bro. Go stream, um, <laughs> go stream that. Aunt Clemens, <laughs> go, happy to be here. Go stream that. Yeah, but it's like you know, there's a, so many people who have done monumental things in South Jersey, and it's like we haven't really figured it out on how to come together. Right, right. Do you feel like you know we're starting to kind of you know understand the idea of building a tribe and staying together to really put, you know, South Jersey on the map. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely feel like we're doing that. Um, you know, you 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 doing this and building this place is a, is a is is a huge step in that. And um this is this is actually the future of South Jersey. But yeah, we are, man. I I, I think and that's something we could we could really take 100% pride mm-hmm. in. You know what I mean? Like from the door, it was like, you know, once the homies started making music, shout out committee music. You know, that was in, in, in the basement, in our basement, you know what I mean? My basement, Eric's basement. And it was just like, bro, ain't nobody, nobody's doing this from here. No one sounds like this from here. It's, it's, that's y'all, so go, go, go get it, you know what I mean? So taking pride in that because we from Jersey, South Jersey at that. So we got a different chip on our shoulder, you know what I mean? Nice. We have a different grit. Um, no shade to anybody else, but because we haven't, we haven't had the light on us, you know what I mean? Or they will put other areas on us. You know what I mean? No, I'm not from New York. I'm not from Philly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm from South Jersey. <laughs> you how do you me? how do you feel when somebody says, "Oh, like yo, you from Philly?" I mean, how does that make you feel? When I mean, it depends on where they're from. Okay. Because if they're from somewhere where they should know better, then I'll <laughs> <laughs> you know better. You feel Facts. me? But um, for people that are you know. From further away, they because we, we'll use that. It's like oh, South Jersey, right next to Philly. They be like, right. you know what I mean? Respect as it should be because it's that's the that's the, the major city that's that's close to us. So um, so I don't feel no kind of way because like I said, we 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 love Philly. You know what I mean? Philly is Philly is a part of us too. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? That culture shaped it us heavy. Yeah, I mean you can't front on that. No, so, not at all. So yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel no kind of way, but we have a different chip on our shoulder though because we wanted to prove and show like, nah, we have extreme talent here, and and the light just ain't it, it didn't hit this area yet, but perfect timing. You can't stop divine timing. Right. So that's kind of that's kind of where we're at, and we and and not only did we start we started bubbling, but we literally took took pride in sticking together, and then like you know, shout out Southside, what right. they did. They they took it South to the side. You, know I mean? you got Mira, it. Mira Fontaine, Kev yeah. Rogers, Ish Williams, yeah. you know, uh the twins, uh t- Chris Tack, all of them, man, Heavy. listen, that movement alone Heavy. it literally shaped everything that we pushing Heavy. forward right now. Heavy. So shout out to them for that. Heavy. Heavy, yeah. Shout out to them for real, for real, man, because when they did that, that was 
that was heavy, mm-hmm. that was strong, you know what I mean? And um, so and and that was the energy we we all had. Period. You yep. know what I mean? Um, so once they did that, that was another step towards it. And it's just like, yeah, we gotta rock together. Like, why not? You know what I mean? Going to Philly to doing shows. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's all Jersey. Right. So I think it's like it's crazy because we doing a lot of the the leg work mm-hmm. to put you know South Jersey in a position to where it's relevant mm-hmm. and. At times, I look at it like we might not be here to see the fruits of that labor. Right, right, right. And we got to be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, sure. we got to be okay with putting, you know, another 15 to 20 years That's or right. 30 years into it. And even if we're not here to see the fruits of the labor, the next generation or the generation after them yeah. got to be able to feel and have a stain when somebody says they're from South Jersey. Mm-hmm. With Rich Fit Media, I've seen you in the midst of Herbalife, in the midst of your personal training, in the midst of the health and wellness field, and now with Rich Fit Media, right. I've been able to see you change people's lives with those interactions. That's heavy. Thank you, bro. How has Rich Fit Media changed your life? Mm, that's a great question. You're good. <laughs> you're really like you're good at this, man. You found another one, man. <laughs> but, um, sheesh, man. So, first of all, shout out to my brother, Nightchild. He's the one that gave me that name. Mm. I, uh, that's what was going on. You know, I do the personal training right. thing. Um, you know, I do the camera thing. Um, so, I had bro in the session. He was training. Um, and I kind of did, a, like, a highlight video for him real quick. He didn't see me really, like, you know, he didn't notice it because I'm telling him, like, bro, mm-hmm. 100 push-ups now burpees now like right. you know what i mean so he didn't even peep so i did the video and he was like damn you know starch uh-huh. starch like damn you bro you gave me a training session and a highlight video <laughs> like how'd you give me a whole rich fit media package <laughs> okay and that's when i was like yeah, I'm, a, I'm a yeah that's that is actually what i do so shout out to him for that and um it's, it's changed my life because it gave me uh it gave me wholeness it completed all the things that I thought I was doing for nothing, you know what I mean? So when I was lost, when I, not well, along my way, right, when I was just only health and wellness, mm-hmm. and then I then I, I, I created the, the Herbalife hats, so now it's health and wellness and designer, okay. Then I picked up the camera. It's like, okay, so what's going on? So it's like, this is great, but do I need to just focus on one and put my 10,000 hours in master one, mm-hmm. or do I continue with all of these? Um, so then, it all come in full circle for Rich Fit Media is, oh, no, nah, he, he does all that. He's going to promote health and wellness regardless. Right. You know what I mean? He's always going to have the camera out. You can definitely book him for $1 million mm-hmm. an hour. $1 million um, an hour. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, he's going to give you high-quality merch that, that means that means something and that feels like something. You know what I mean? So it all came together, and that's that's kind of how it changed my life. It gave me some completeness and um, more reassurance that, yeah, God always got me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And there's still more to come with that. So, I think having the dynamic of you know having the health and wellness, rich fit media, you know, rich fit media side of the apparel, yep. then rich fit media side of the photography, it, it it really just embodies everything that the lifestyle is about. Like mm-hmm. the idea of die empty, like to me, like I said, when I first saw it, to me, it hit me deep in my soul because mm. it, it made me question myself. Mm. It made me question, like, yo, am I really giving everything that I got right, right, at this right. point? And when you see something like that, and that, you know, I could have just been an average person that's on the street right. and see Die Empty, and it's like the ability to put a message on a shirt and allowing the consumer to internalize the message, yeah. that's what is going to be able to change somebody's life. And that's something that, you know, I, I applaud you for wow, every you. single day because – you're out here changing people's lives. It's not about, you know, selling a million dollars worth of clothes. Mm-hmm. It's more so about, I'd rather impact a million people yep. rather than make a million dollars. Because that impact is something that if I'm gone tomorrow, that's something that people can remember me by. Exactly. And with that being said, you know, what is the one thing that you want people to remember you by? Yeah, bro. First of all, thank you for real, for real. Yeah, nah. that, that that means a lot, bro. That's heavy. Um, 
And to yeah, man, to answer that, it's it's literally that. The one thing I want people to remember me by is living full out. You know what I mean? Going all out, not being afraid or not being tied down to anyone's idea of what my life should look like and, and being okay with giving everything. So knowing everything that I was doing, I was doing it with the fullness from my heart. You know what I mean? I tried my best. I gave it my all in everything that I've been doing. And the most important thing to me um, is significance. When I think about, because um, kind of like what, what Jade was talking about, she didn't know, she's so gifted, she didn't know what to do. And, I, and that's why like, I, 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 I felt her so much, because like I said, I'm, I do so many th different things. Um, I'm like, so where do I go with it? So what do I do when I don't know what to do? I gotta ask the big man, I gotta ask my Lord, right? So I pray on it. And then after I pray on it, I'm like, what's the most important thing to me? Because this life is short. Significance. So, like, what is important is my funeral. It needs to be packed. You know what I mean? Whatever <sighs> packed is for me. Listen. Because, because of how people, because of how I made people feel. You know what I mean? So, it's about being significant because everything else kind of really doesn't, doesn't really matter. I don't want to just be rich or successful, but I didn't touch no one's heart when I was around them. Or I didn't say, yo, how you doing? And meant it. Right. Or I didn't say, yo, I'm going to pray for you and really prayed for you. Right. So, for me, it was just about, all right, I need to be significant as possible. And as long as I stretch towards that, I'm going to win. Nah, that's. That's it, bro. That's, that's, that's really all that it's about. And I think when I talk so heavy about Nipsey, like, I'm not about to shed no thug tears because, like, for real, but, like, I'm just, I'm so infused in, in, in who he was as an individual. For sure. And I see that in so many people around me where it's more so focused on what is going to be my impact when I'm gone. Right. And, like, that's something that every morning that I wake up, that's the thing that I ask myself is how many people did I impact today? It don't matter how much I'm, I'm going to make money. Mm -hmm. Like money is there. It's going to come in abundance. Um, th that's just what my attitude is towards, yep. you know, the monetary side of things. Yep. But every morning when I wake up, how many people am I impacting? Amen. Am I changing somebody's life? Yep. If my funeral not looking like Nipsey's at, sta at Staples Center, mm -hmm. I don't I'm not going to feel fulfilled. <laughs> right. Right. When right. my time comes, yeah. if, I, if it's not looking like that, then I'm not going to feel fulfilled because everything that we're pursuing is so much bigger than us. Mm hmm. Yep. And when I saw Die Empty on the front of his shirt, that's all that I could think about. That's crazy. And I never knew that. Bro, we never bro about that. that's literally, like, and it, I'm not trying to air this out just on the podcast just because it's the moment or, like, right. it's the right time. Like, I genuinely feel like when I saw Die Empty, it was more so about me checking myself saying, yo, how many people did I impact today? Because ultimately what we're pursuing is so much bigger than us. That if we're not able to take our blinders off mm -hmm. and understand that, we're going to trip our own growth. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not focused on impacting the next live or impacting the next person, you're going gonna to stunt short. your own growth. Yeah. you always going to fall short. Mm -hmm. And when I saw Die Empty, that's literally the first thing that I thought. And it literally changed my whole trajectory. Like, my mission was already to impact. Right, right, right. It 10x that. Right. Wow. That's crazy, bro. And that's how the power of being a designer, like there's so much power in that. And ultimately we have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for that power mm -hmm. because we have to make sure we're putting the right messages out. We have to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're putting the right things out so people can impact and take in what we have to deliver. Yep. Fuck making a million dollars. Right, right, right. Let's impact a million people. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mean to rant, but you know, nah, but we in the moment, but it's nah, just, it's just that. all honesty. We need that. And with that, we can leave off probably on this last question. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you were to see yourself, a younger version of you, mm -hmm. what is the first piece of advice you would give yourself? That's a tough question. A younger version of me. Like you staring. What age? You, I need to, you I literally, need you age. literally staring at yourself in middle school, and you're like, "Yo, this is what your life is supposed to be like." What is that conversation and how does it go? Does it does it change anything? If you were to talk to yourself in eighth grade, right. would it change anything? I I don't know. 
I don't think I would want to change anything. Right. I, I, yeah, I don't think I would want to change anything because that brought me to to where I'm at now. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't want to mess with, with what God got going on. But if I had to, that's that's really wild, man. If I and I think about that question too. I've heard it, you know. Not not to the exact of how you you know you just said middle school, but um, yeah, I would I would just tell myself that I love you, God loves you, and um, always always call on Him when you don't know what to do or when you feel lonely. And I think that would be it, and I think that would be enough, especially like a thirty year old black man uh-huh. just telling me in middle school like, yo, I love you. And God loves you. Yeah. Bro, that, that would that would really be it. That that conversation, that that dialogue alone would change somebody's life at that age. Yeah. yeah. Because we're not thinking of, we're not taught to love at that age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're taught to hate each other at that age because we want to get to the next spot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Crabs. it's like just to be able to, you know, have that dialogue, it's crazy, man. But Listen, man, we you know we've been at it for an hour. You pushed over an hour and two minutes, man. I don't okay. never let nobody go over an hour. Come on now. So, I mean, it must it must be the waves or the Yeezys. <laughs> I don't know where we at, but it might be that. But um, just listen, man. Just you know, keep doing everything that you're doing. Thank you're inspiring you, people. You inspire me every day. Um, you know, and and for those who don't know, Rich Fit Media is going to be a worldwide brand, worldwide movement. Amen. Um, Building the tribe right now, the tribe ready to go. So, um, Rich, uh, Raj, just tell them, you know, where to find you at, website, social media, all that good stuff. Right, for sure. Yeah, so um, social media is uh, Rich Fit Media on everything, um, Instagram, so at Rich Fit Media, at Rich Fit Media on Twitter as well. Um, uh, website is RFM, well, RFmedia.store, and uh, yeah. I'll see y'all soon, man. Send me a message, DM, something. Let me know that this touched you in any way, something that you would want to hear more of. And uh, thank you for having me, bro. Extremely Listen, grateful man. to be on this platform. It's, it's, it's amazing to have goats in the same room, let alone goats from South Jersey. Sam, you know what I'm saying? So Sam. we can start the map going. But yes, I'm not going to let you go on that note because we're not going to be all sentimental in here and all this sweet shit. So... We got rapid fire. It's three questions. You got to answer Ooh. them as fast as you can. Yeah, we gonna, I'm going to fuck you up real quick. Oh, no. All right. So let All me know when you're ready. We can say ready. It's rapid fire, so I don't even know what questions I'm going to ask you, but I'm going to ask you these motherfucking questions. Oh, so um, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, take that sip. <clears throat> A little sip, sip, dip, dip. <laughs> oh, Kurt. <laughs> Big perk. <laughs> All I'm right. ready, man. I ain't playing. Are you me. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, who's your favorite artist? Hold on now, artist like. Ooh, like, hold on. you 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 getting? Oh, you got to answer it. Who's your favorite music artist? You don't say Ann Clemens. You fired. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Oh, he didn't go with Ann Clemens. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, man. Oh, uh, favorite designer. You taking too long. You got to answer. Favorite designer. Who's your favorite designer? You better name somebody. Oh, now Yeezy. Yeezy. Oh, they go Yeezy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll go easy. All right, all right, all right. Quick one. Uh, this one, this one, this one, uh, this one might trip you a little bit. You eat ass. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, there, pal. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know what button I just hit, but I hit a couple buttons. Listen, listen. The sound effects is gonna come in. I'll edit them in on the back end. Listen, man. It's been a pleasure sitting with y'all. This is Cloth Talk with Charles J. We talk designers, manufacturing, all that good stuff. Season one, all about South Jersey. Mm-hmm. You know, got my man Rich Fit Media in here. Sure. Listen, we're out. I finished my glass. I finished my cup of wine, and I was about to drink the other one, but I didn't. But listen, I'm going to get with y'all. Make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. All of that good stuff. We're going to have a bunch of celebrities in the building. Shout out yes, to Rich sure. Fit Media. One goat from South Jersey. We out of here. Love y'all. Talk to y'all soon. Big love. Deuces. And cop my new hoodie. Uh, it might not be here when this episode drops, but... Cop my shit. All right. <laughs> Bye, CharlesJ.com. I'll holla at y'all.